Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. At this time we will take questions and the questions will be in uh, two sets of three questions each. And then after that, maybe we'll use the president's discretion if we can take some more. So you come here, you state the media house from which you come. You ask your Remember the rules. Please stick to the issues that his excellency has addressed come and ask what has been addressed Darius Okunva you can you are the first one Darius let me see the other hand you sir and frankly ministers you need to take notes some questions I'll refer to yourselves thank you and cabinet. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Afternoon. My name is Darius Jonia from Diamond TV. Yes. Mr. President, in your realization uh, to some of the economic um, objectives, you are faced with the high cost of living that has affected small, medium enterprises that need to deal with the high cost of doing business amid um, high inflation rate, as well as stifling taxes and also load shedding. What are some of the incentives that your government has put um, across to cushion the burden on the small, medium enterprises? Thank you. Good afternoon, Your Excellency. My name is Justin Kawisha from ZNBC. Your Excellency, you are very firm on the fight against corruption and also on uniting the country. Now, some of the, the moments, Your Excellency, when some citizens are found wanting by the law or when they commit the law, they rush to traditional leaders, and also the church to seek for support so that uh, they are protected. How are you going to work with the uh, traditional leaders in your case to unite the country, fight corruption, and also develop this country? Thank you. Your Excellency, good afternoon. I'm Franklin Tambo Jr. from ZNBC. Um, in your speech, you indicate that uh, the private sector, among other things, must continue to create jobs. Um, in this context, the elephant in the room seems to be predictability in as far as the provision of uh, energy uh, is concerned. Are you worried about the um, inconsistency in provision of energy, and in this case, uh, electricity, because the public can plan, and uh, this is certainly affecting uh, businesses. What is the decision there for predictability? Thank you. Excellent. Th 
Thank you very much. Darius Diamond, High Cost of Doing Business, Incentives to Question SMEs. I think I did say some of the things, and I'm happy for my colleagues, Minister of Small and Medium Enterprises, to support. Um, first and foremost, Darius, is the facilities that we are availing now. I talked about the CEC. I think you can tell me the interest in there. We have brought the interests down deliberately under the CEC. We have also the CDA facility for the SMEs where people are doing hammer meals, they are doing chickens, they are doing um, all sorts of businesses, fabrication. There are also the interests, I know, there is only 5%. 5% is, is so far below the market price. That is part of the incentives package. Area I talked about, those in the public sector who can draw on facilities under, what's the name of the institution, uh, Secretary of the Cabinet? Public Service Microfinance Facility, Darius, where the interests when we came in were 18%, we have scaled them down to 9%. Those are incentives. We have also now, the Minister of Finance is here, we have taken taxes out Help me, Minister of Finance, solar, right? Solar, irrigation equipment, a number of them. We have taken the taxes out. In fact, zero. Zero percent. Deliberate. Maybe what we should do, Darius, is to announce and make these things regularly, sing about them. I think we need to sing about these things. There's a myriad of other facilities. Some are actually grants, a clear grant. You qualify under the CDF, you get a grant, and that grant allows you to inject some capital in your business. That is a number of those facilities. I will ask the minister later on, as I sit down, SME, to basically come through. Maybe you can do it now so that we don't have to go front and back. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the SMEs, there was um, an advert, Mr. President, which was given by the Citizen Economic Empowerment Commission, and we told SMEs to apply uh, for solar panels, batteries, uh, power irrigated uh, system, and we are now in the process of awarding up to about 500 SMEs across the country. And um, these loans, as the president said, the interest rate is just about 5 to about 9%. And we continue, Mr. President, as you said, the government for sure, I want to re, um, reaffirm this. Those that are importing solar products, irrigation system, it is zero percent through the Ministry of Finance. We continue, Mr. President, even now, um, while we are um, discussing with the JICA President, we also as a ministry, we have partnered with JICA, and we are also giving SMEs capacity building, and we are also giving them a grant from JICA focusing on the solar products so that smaller businesses would continue. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Honorable Mubanga, Avena Shuangandu. Thank you. There are a couple more things. Let me flip or extend the incentive tariffs a little bit. Some of the things you don't see them incentives, but they are. But what we've done now, in order to reduce the cost to the families, where an SME person comes from, a family, because of the drought, because of the issues you have raised, we have created an additional social cash transfer to the families, where, say, an SME person or owner comes from, so that alleviates the cost of food on them. Are we together? 
a lot of those colleagues are receiving at the family level, including women who run, a lot of women run businesses in our country, small businesses. So we are putting them, we put them and we continue to put them on an enhanced social cash transfer tied to this drought, tied to these challenges that we're facing. Let me angle something else, which Zambians sometimes don't see clearly. We knew that the economy was gone. How do we know? How did we know? High debt, defaulted, the economy went down. So we knew, even before we took office, that we needed to take certain measures. Amongst those measures, Darius, was to offer free education. So imagine a household which had two, three children, and they were paying school fees. We come in, we now take over that burden from the family. It means that the family has more disposable income to focus on also feeding themselves. This, you may think, is remote. It is direct. Because savings there, because the school fees are now taken over by government, that money now, you can buy food, you can buy one or two things in your small business. I'm just drawing some direct aspects of subsidy. Subsidy. But I must also say, the Minister of Finance, I'll call him at some stage, that uh, we have also realigned the 2024 budget to take out areas what we believe is non-essential expenditure. And those savings from there will be directed more in households, stability income, stability income into small businesses to enhance the amounts that we allocate for those sectors, including vulnerable families. I think that's important. I won't get the Minister of Finance to stand up now because you'll have to cover one or two other things. Let me go through it. Minister of Finance, you can pack that if you want to add uh, other things. But also, Darius, let me say, colleagues that are seated here, if you feel there's a suggestion you can make, I already made the core area. Please forward that suggestion so we can look at your suggestion and see how it can help. We'll be looking at what countries before us did in times of crisis, and we're picking a few lessons. Some of them, you see them come through the amended budget. I think Parliament opens. The budget is next week. The amended budget will go to Parliament to ensure that we've met the legal requirements for amending the budget to shift resources, as I said, to where they're most needed, away from where it's less important. Now, someone shouldn't write, so you budgeted wrongly. That's not the issue. It's not the issue. The budget was done before the draft. The budget was done in October last year, before we knew whether there would be a drought or not. Uh, so uh, I want to curtail lines of communication or media that take a different life away from what we're discussing here. Um, ZNBC, Justin, ZNBC strong on corruption, some culprits rush to traditional leaders, and the church. How do we deal with this? How do we work with the church? The traditional leaders, Justin, let me tell me, was it last week or 10 days ago, we brought here, we had a meeting right here in the cabinet room behind where you are with five chiefs from, yes, from each of the 10 provinces. That led us to 50 chiefs, traditional leaders, who represent chiefs in each province. The chiefs have a structure that in Muchinga, XYZ represent the chiefs in Muchinga out of all of them, these five. Some are in the House of Chiefs. So we met here and discussed working together on this drought, feeding people, but also on increasing resilience, where we even say to the chiefs now, every chief must produce food. If we really man to lead the way. And I can tell you, 
Justin, I'm a farmer, but a cattle farmer. But because of this situation, I've decided to move some of the money, capital from cattle, sell off the cattle, maybe two, three thousand, put that money into crop to produce more food. Right? That's what I'm doing. I am not going to the banks. I want to leave the banks for others who need the banks. So me, I'm just shifting capital from here to there, and I'll be irrigating Bamwewa for the first time. I'll be producing two crops a year. I hope to hit 400 hectares of irrigation this year to, to, to lead the way, to lead the way, to provide leadership from the front. So we say to the chiefs, these chiefs, let him produce enough food for your family because the subjects must see that the chief is leading, not from behind, but from the front. What else do we discuss? Exactly this issue. It's like you knew. Anyway, you work for ZNBC. Maybe you heard. <laughs> we raise this issue that one, we must unite our country. Ten provinces. All of them. Without exception. All of them. Under this leadership, no inch of Zambia will be allowed to be on its own. We're a unitary state. We have to work towards development and redistributing equitably the development. And I said to the chiefs, we should not entertain divisive talk. What else? We should not support corruption. And I reminded them, because we are now able to save money, even before we had the debt restructuring, we are able to build their palaces. In the next two years, every chief will have a decent home. Proper housing, I launched that at Chief Chimense in Mansa. You saw me. And that house is coming up very well now. I'm monitoring, checking. That money came from our prudence and the push against corruption. And we said to them they needed to support us. When we, the subjects, go to the chiefs to say they're persecuting me because I'm from your chiefdom, I said to the chiefs, ask them to say, why are they pursuing you, only you? What did you take that doesn't belong to you? Tell me, my subject, secretly tell me. I was saying it in the cabinet. And ask them, did you take something? If you took something, did you bring it here for us to share as your chiefs? Or you shared with other of your colleagues? And we resolved, to cut the story short, Justin, we resolved that the chiefs will support the fight against corruption. Levy was there, my political advisor. We also have been talking to the church. I said last week I was having a meeting with the pastor's fellowship on the Copper Bell. Some of you watched it. And we raised the same issue. Whichever bishop, those who take money from the poor citizen, do they bring it to the church to share his tithe or what? Whichever I told you, I could know. So why should you now be involved? We agreed, and I will continue the meeting with the chiefs as I go into provinces. I will continue the meetings with the churches. That's my answer, sir. We must abhor corruption. We must not tolerate people running to people they never even respected in the first place when they were in public office. That is the truth. That's not the way we should work. Franklin, energy provision, it is erratic. I already said it, Franklin. Because we are highly hydro based in terms of electricity, when there's a drought, immediately you see the impact on energy. I said it. So the issue of instability, erratic supply of energy is a given. 
The question is that how do we respond? I think that's the question. We are responding by increasing the energy mix, solar. We should have done, we could have done better. I'm the first one to accept, but we're pushing. I don't know, Minister of Finance, whether you have secured the debt with pension funds. I asked the Minister, very good. I asked the Minister of Finance, this Minister of Finance yesterday, I directed him that he and I and other experts want to meet in this cabinet room all the pension funds in this country, public and private, and banks. We will discuss here to ask them to put money, pension money they have, more in the energy sector so that we can generate other energy sources which are not dependent on the rain. Frankly, are we together? That's one band. So we increase the generation. As I said to you that God was slapping us to say, wake up, you've been lazy. You, a country called Zambia, you, my children, have been lazy. You've not been generating enough electricity. You've not been in harvesting water. Wake up. We take God's call and wake up call seriously. What else are we doing? We're working again. We're meeting Friday. Energy Minister is here to work on a number of things to operationalize quickly what we call open access. Right? So anyone who produces power, uses some, releases some excess, we should buy through the system automatically. Open access. If you're generating in Kawe and the power is needed in Livingstone, it will run on the network that exists. We are allowing that to happen. That network is an asset that belongs to the nation, the economy. We just work out commercial issues, tariffs, for example, willing charges, to be specific. What else are we doing? Net metering. This Friday, I said to this Minister of Energy that Friday we are meeting to conclude. We don't want bureaucrats. I'm pronouncing it deliberately. Not that I don't know how to pronounce it. Bureaucrats. Bureaucrats where things don't get done. That's what I meant by people thinking that they are working because they went to office eight hours and they were in the office without delivery. We don't want that bureaucrats. We want delivery. Friday to push the net metering. What does that do? It will encourage any one of us who is capable of putting a solar system on their rooftop. They use the power that they generate. I don't know how many kilowatts. Huh? Then the excess will be automatically sold to the grid. And Mr. Y or Mrs. X, you earn some revenue. But someone else who needs the power uses it. Currently, for example, at my house, I generate more power than I need on the solar. But I can't put it in the grid. The system doesn't allow. Friday, we are unlocking that. <laughs> what that will do, it will put more power from certain sources which is in excess into the system. And then we can release the more industrial power called best lot for irrigation, for mines, for factories. Minister of Finance is here. We also want to check again all taxes on solar related storage based on the numbers. He will advise, we will advise, we want to further reduce those if it's possible. But we have almost done that already. But one of the things that is lacking, Franklin, we're not communicating properly. Where's Franklin? We're not communicating. So we need ZNBC. Let's work together so that we can communicate these packages, where one can buy them, how much they cost, and he or she who can fix them on the rooftops or whatever. This is part of the package. We want to utilize your skills as communication experts. And when people have the information, they will respond positively. I'm confident about it. I've told cabinet yesterday that all of us in cabinet, I'm leading the way. Whoever has a property, 
they must put solar, release that energy to someone else who cannot afford to put solar. So is industry, so is, I think, government offices, or government offices, all of them, so that we can release that energy that is there to others. So these are measures we are taking, frankly. But the question of erratic supply is a given. What we thought was good, that we were green in terms of energy, you know what I mean? That we are basically environmentally correct, it has now become a problem on us. We were actually being praised across Africa that Zambia is already 90 plus percent green energy. Drought comes, gone. Just like that. Another slap. A wake up call. So let's work together to package information, to make citizens aware that there are solutions, and to lower the cost of those that we inject. Area one of you asked about the cost of doing business. Those are some of the areas. Thank you. I will ask the Minister of Finance to just comment, if you wish, on some of the issues on incentives and also anything else you feel. Our public here and through the media, in the country and in the world. Because as we speak now, the world is watching technology. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let me confine my remarks to uh, the issue of the high cost of living. I think it's a very broad issue among most of our citizens. Um, His Excellency the President responded on some of the measures that are in place, and uh, my colleague also responded with uh, some of the measures taken to support the micro enterprises. Let me focus on those who are neither necessarily, not necessarily micro entrepreneurs, but they have no job. They live in the rural areas, they live in urban areas, and the drought has hit them because they were farmers, they've lost everything, that is, if in the rural areas. In the urban areas, the price of food, maize, has gone up. What happens? The first thing that I want to say is that um, this government took the deliberate decision to increase the price of maize because in the absence of that, we saw that farmers were getting less and less interested in growing maize. They were going for, soy going for soybeans. So the government made that deliberate decision to incentivize the farmers that has contributed to the higher price of uh, maize. So what is the answer now for those who have no jobs, for those who are struggling is the answer to push the price of maize back? The answer is, uh, of course, no, because we'll be shooting ourselves in the feet. So one of the issues that cabinet has discussed is public works program. Public works program. Because if people are not able to afford food, the answer is not necessary to push down the prices of maize and help the farmers, but part of the answer is, can you do something to empower those who have no incomes or little incomes for them to do some kind of work for the public where they will earn money? And because now they've earned money, they can be able to buy food for themselves. This is something that has happened in many countries. Here in Africa, Ethiopia has done that before for a number of years when they had a drought. So one of these schemes that cabinet office is working on is this public works program. How is it going to be administered? So public works program, to give you examples, here in town, we all complain about Lusaka being dirty. 
Can we hire youths on a regular basis to clear the town of the debris, to clear the drainages, the drainages so that when the next rainy season comes, we don't talk about cholera because we've cleared uh, uh, the city. In the rural areas, there are many places where small bridges are required. You can hire the youths whose crops is gone. Come, this bridge, build a bridge for yourself. You get paid. With that money, you are going to buy food. Um, there are places which are suffering from deforestation. Maybe again in rural areas, call the able-bodied able people, come, let's plant trees, you get paid, you go and buy food. So public works program is something that we are going to push so that colleagues who don't have jobs or whose incomes are unstable or very low can be empowered to be able to do useful work for society, get paid, and then, even though the price of minimum has gone up, but because you've been paid, you should be able to afford to buy some maize. I thought I should clarify on that particular strategy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. We'll take the last three questions. The last three questions. We'll start with you here. There's no ladies. Are you from ZNBC? No, ZNBC, we had two questions here earlier on. I'm looking for, there's a lady there. Yes. Uh, anyone from News Diggers? Yes. And Prime TV? Yes. You can come through. Good afternoon, Mr. President. My name is Sarah Mitty. I'm from Zanis. So you've answered part of my question, and uh, it's concerning the energy deficit, and you've answered it quite well. But my question is on uh, what you are going to do as government to ensure that that zero tax that you have introduced for providers of these alternative sources of energy it's actually being trickled down to the consumers because ironically the cost of purchase for these uh, alternative sources of energy has gone up so trying to understand what is really causing that you know how are, how are we going to ensure that the consumers apart from just the SMEs even just individuals are able to afford this because unfortunately Mr. President uh, most of the people are going for charcoal as the cheapest source of uh, uh, energy for cooking and uh, it's going against your commitments Mr. President to the international community that we're going to ensure that we prevent or reduce on deforestation because currently Zambia it has got one of the highest rates of deforestation so it's like we're pulling in two different directions that's my simple question sir Good afternoon, Mr. President. Afternoon. Yes, uh, my name is Ulandenko Mesha from News Diggers Newspaper. Sorry, the mic is kind of short. <laughs> News Diggers Newspaper. And um, most of the questions I think have been asked, but I'll go for a political one. Um, recently, we well, have seen the former head of state has gone on uh, international media to say that he's under house arrest and that uh, he, the government is actually peeling him, his family like onions. And uh, he says that uh, he, he can't even campaign, he can't even go out. Uh, maybe my question is that uh, are his comments genuine? And we've also seen that Oasis Forum have come, come on board to say, uh, to give his, the comment on the matter. 
But the, my question maybe would be, are his comments genuine in terms of him saying he's under house arrest and his freedoms are being gagged? Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Your Excellency. Good afternoon. My name is Matthews Ndandula from Prime TV. Mine is uh, on the education sector. Your Excellency, uh, your government has been seen giving scholarship to the students at higher in, uh, institutions. Mm -hmm. But now, I want to dwell on um, measures, if the, if the government has measures that has been put in place to make sure that um, it clears the backlog of unpaid terminal benefits for some of the lectures at the higher institutions e.g. is the University of Zambia. Thank you. Your Excellency. Thank you very much, colleagues, for your questions. Um, Sarah, Zanis, cost of alternative sources of energy have gone up despite the tax waivers. Um, and therefore, people are moving to charcoal, which in itself is destructive. Um, very good question you have asked. Um, I think the issue now is to check. We need to engage those that are uh, involved in the business of um, alternative energy, such as solar. I think that's what you're talking about primarily. We, pro we know what the prices were before the taxes were removed. So we now need to sit down with them that why have they not dropped the prices? Uh, there could be other reasons we don't know, but it could be also opportunism to make more money because they now know that there's need for, uh, if you like, for more of these sources of energy. And um, we will establish what the reason is. Definitely colleagues are here, cabinet office, state house, ministers. We have to engage those colleagues. What is the issue? Because the relief is supposed to go to the intended beneficiaries who are the consumers, the people who buy those applications or sources of energy. So good point. This is also a matter that we were grappling with, the price of millimil. Millers get millimil at a fair price from FRA, but they were still selling the millimil at a higher price. That's why we have now pushed more of ZNS, more of correctional services, but we've also reached out. We called them for meetings, exactly what you're saying what the issue is or was, and we have been able to get more millers across the country to join in with what we called ally, allied millers. Very innovative. We are not communicating, colleagues. I think, you know, Franklin, you are right. Because if we were communicating such information to the nation, we now have more allied millers, some of whom are producing Millimil under the ZNS Ego brand, but actually it's not ZNS, but they are working with ZNS. We provide them with the raw material, which is maize. And that's why we are working to secure more maize. Why have I used that example? It is similar. It is similar, Sarah, to what is happening in that space. So, so log in an action point there to meet all those dealers, at least the established dealers, and have a conversation. We want to see a price reduction. What else has pushed the price? Cetaris Peribus, other things being equal, we expect the price to come down. So thank you for that uh, observation. And I want to encourage citizens, any other citizen, do what Sarah has just done so that we can now interrogate those issues. Um, the charcoal issue is not an option because it will further exacerbate the climate damage. I'm not sure whether charcoal is cheaper. Again, we have to interrogate that. Frankly speaking, there are options coming for cooking now. Gas, 
more efficient stops, Sarah, using minimum energy, but higher efficiency, cooks quicker. We need the cooperation of the public. In fact, there are institutions that are even giving free stops, isn't it? Cylinders and gas and stoves which are more efficient. I think colleagues, ministers, cabinet, PSCs, all of us, we need to take that as a guidance note to engage those as well so that we can promote market alternative cooking methods and save our carbon assets, carbon sinking assets, such as our forest. Part of the challenge we have with the rain pattern is because we're deforest, basically we're cutting trees rampantly. As you know, trees help you in the ecosystem to stabilize the rains. So thank you for uh, those comments. Colleagues, I'm expecting an action list being written here. Everything the President commits to be doing, Secretary of the Cabinet, must be written in there. That's what I call working, not hanging around. Don't hang around in this press briefing. Let's work. Then we pick out work out of here. Next, news diggers, friend of mine, ours, former president is, <laughs> is under house arrest. His freedoms are being gagged, as you have seen over time, that I resist the temptation to answer to what the sixth Republican president of Zambia has been saying, including where he retires from politics. I think on the 26th of August or thereabout, 2021, and once he retires, he's entitled, according to the law, benefits. The law I didn't make, but the law is mine and yours because it was made by us, Parliament, of that time. In fact, that was made, was it before his time or during his time? Before his time. Even him didn't make that law. We don't make laws for ourselves. Laws apply for every citizen. The law is very clear. Former President's Emolument uh, Benefit. Former President's Benefit Act is there. He retires, automatically he gets his benefits. Then he decides to come back in politics. The law is clear again. When you decide to come back in politics, you lose your benefits. Are we together? Instantaneously, you don't even need to invoke any motivation. You lose your benefits. That's the law. He's a lawyer. I won't comment whether he's a top-notch lawyer or not. That's not, my, that's not my business. I have my own opinion. And the facts are there. Right? And sometimes we must be careful with what we say, right? Because the public have the information. And how we conducted ourselves when we did anything. So, as a lawyer, he knows the law is explicit, very clear. You come back to politics, you lose your benefits. What does my brother do? He goes to court. Out of his own volition, the law is invoked. He goes to court and says he's being persecuted because his benefits are not there. And he will communicate to BBC, CNN, but the facts are different. But when he was asked the other day, before he said, people reminded him, you lose your benefits if you do this. I don't care about the benefits. The benefits disappear by law. He starts asking for benefits, he's in court. Now, has this happened before? Yes. Which president? President Kaunda. Did that, in accordance with the law, he lost the benefits when he went back to politics. When he finally retired, the law again is clear. He got his benefits. It's not an argument. It's a law. I just wanted to clarify that. But it's not for me to spend time on these issues. He's a citizen of Zambia. He knows the law. 
as to whether he's under house arrest, I don't know. I'm not aware. Let me just ask a question. When was that J.J. Banda? Something happened after he claimed that he was under house arrest. Then the following day, he freely took himself to a police station or to a court, I think, to escort somebody. To a police station. Ah, to report the disappearance of J.J. Banda. Now, somebody under arrest, you can't leave the house. There you are. The test of the pudding is in the eating. Who is fooling who? It's there. Some of these things, we shouldn't get into those discussions. We really have, should have self-restraint. On your own, you say, I'm a mature man. I'm almost 70. I've been around. I can't mislead the nation. Right? Then, harassment. What harassment? Truthfully, if I was like him, he would have known what harassment means. Because he harassed me day and night. He's there. He locked me up 15 times. He put me under the death row for a crime I did not commit. When I took office, I said, I don't want to do what he did to me. If I do what he did to me, then I'm not different from him. I stand by that position after today. But you cannot use the former president's status to go out and break the law. Because you are not covered by that immunity. Please, those who are asking for immunity, this is not an issue. Leave his immunity. He continues breaking the law, soon he will be arrested. Simple. It's as simple as that. Ubufumu wishtashani? Endi tampoi. We must be self-respecting for the community to respect us. Ebufumu wishtindi gomwe. That's what it means. But really, this is not my focus. I have a lot of work to do. I do take note of what he says, but I choose to ignore him. That's who I am. I hear a lot of things. Even what you guys exchange on your private platforms, I plant a few people here and there to say, what's going on on that platform? Okay, check this one. I check. Sometimes I laugh as I say, these Zambians. What are they saying here now? <laughs> you know? One must be big enough to have a chest big enough to isolate that this is where my effort must be. Zambians are hungry because of the drug. That's where my interest is. To irrigate. That's where my interest is. Sarah's comment to win all people from Chaco. That's where my interest is. To have a fair price of solar. That's where my interest is. To have the debt restructured. Let me tell you. Sleepless nights. This minister, the economic team, this president, many other people, sleepless nights. You must start observing your fellow citizens. When we set our eyes on something, it's difficult, it will take long. God's help, it shall be done. Here we are. We called it Mission Impossible. Here we are. We are the first one in the world to achieve the restructuring. We found many countries in the queue. We jumped. Not because we corrupted somebody, just hard work. Now Zambia is a guinea pig. You know what a guinea pig is? Don't say that, don't write that HH Zambia, say Zambia is a pig. No. A guinea pig in science means a trial, you know, a test tube exercise. The, a, a pig you use to test if you did this, what would be the reaction? So we are now the test country. For once, we should be proud of ourselves and that there was hard work behind this. That's where my mind is. 
People will say, oh, you and there's bango, the relationship with China. I say, ah, Bembera first. Just wait, wait. Things are done properly in an organized way. I know Zambians are not used to that because of the leaders. Some of the leaders we've had were haphazard. Things must be done in an organized way, properly. Sometimes sequentially, sometimes simultaneously at the same time. That's order which delivers success. It takes longer sometimes. It's very complicated. I've never, I'm a transactions man myself. Most of you don't know. My private business life, what I used to do included transactions. Putting transactions together, getting a buyer, a seller, getting an investor, and putting them together. If I gave you a list of the things we did, even in our, our areas, many of you don't know, but you will be, be surprised. This was a very complicated transaction. Too many players, politics in it, east, west. You go to Beijing, the west says no, you are against us. You go to Washington, the east says no, are you with us or you are with Washington? Until I said, if I'm in Washington, I'm not against Beijing. I'm sure you remember that. If I'm in Beijing, I'm not against Washington. We went through a lot of challenges, but we thank the global network of colleagues who believed in us, and you, and your patience. First, you're electing us into office, then your patience. And we ask you to remain patient. If there was a shorter route, we would have used a shorter route on all these things that we face. So I believe that answers that question of someone's freedom. He's a citizen. He has rights, but there are also obligations. If you go in the market, you start instigating those marketeers, some were PF, some were UPND, who were fighting before, and now we've cooled them down. Then you go in the market and instigate them to start fighting again. Then you shouldn't go in that market because you are creating trouble now. You become a source of trouble now, right? We watch, we follow. You were there encouraging the youth to fight. Who is your responsibility? Rights, one side, the flip side, obligations. Rights on one side, flip side, limits. That's how it works. Please, fellow Zambians, when there's an issue like this, Follow it, and you make your judgment where the problem is. The problem is very clear where it's coming from. So, BBC stories are written. I said, now, what is being talked about here? One capital asked me, he said, you arrested your colleague. HH, you promise you will not arrest him. I said, my promise remains. We don't arrest innocent people. We only arrest people who are committed crimes. The law arrests them, not me. So I said, no, but your colleague said you arrested him. I said, when? He said, about uh, three, four days ago. But I said, but yesterday he was walking in town. How is it that a man in detention was walking in town? Even illegally, right? You can't run a procession without notifying the police. Did he get arrested? No. Why? Restraint, maturity. Maturity. That's the issue. So I decided to answer comment for the first time. And you will not hear me commenting on it. But all I can say to you, when you rise to this level, you have bigger obligations to keep the country safe and peaceful. Don't stroke trouble. Don't continue stroking trouble. Uh, when you get it, you complain. Because soon the law says you can't go beyond this. That's the truth. And let me remind you, please, MPs, when I leave office, when Zambians decide that I must do something else, I will not commit crimes. 
and hide behind the presidents are occupied a favor a rare favor from the people of Zambia with God's wish I will not go out committing crimes and then cry that I need protection I will not have that protection that's the truth so really why mess up a country there's a drought there's this then you're stroking trouble you're inviting hey come I'm here then you're a coward if you don't follow me you're a coward hmm. <laughs> Matthews tell me in a of lecturers genuine point where's Matthews genuine point if you remember one of the things we did please take a seat we committed to clearing benefits, retirement benefits, of those that worked in government direct. There's a slight difference. There's a direct government, correct me, uh, Secretary of Cabinet, and quasi-government. I think the university is a quasi-government. Am I right? So the first thing we did was those who worked for direct government to clear their benefits. The minister is here. We've done well. Many people say, oh, this new don government has failed. Give us a scale of 10 over a five-year period, what we said we would do and where you are. You will find that we have actually already passed the test. We're probably on seven out of 10. So we're working on the remaining. But on the terminal benefits, we have paid those who worked for government directly. The minister is here. And we're almost current now. We are current. Three months, no more 20 years. People were sleeping. The Zambians forget, eh? People, have you forgotten? People were sleeping here at the ministries, even having overnight prayers. Do you see them there now? They've been paid. <laughs> Delivery in accordance to the commitment. So we will look into those matters. It's very fair matters. But I'm glad you acknowledge that you know, today, yesterday, I wrote a surprise. Students, I see, I see a posting. Students were celebrating H.H.'s birthday. They said, who is this? Whose birthday are they celebrating? I'm a villager, so, you know, I don't pay too much attention. But I was really humbled that students were able to recognize the work this government has done in the last two years, nine months, to restore meal allowances. It's a big issue. And our kids who were leaving school are in school, they have food. More bursaries, more student loans, more secondary school bursaries at the constituents. In education is the best investment. I'm an example, but I want to make others be even better than me. I came from the village. I knew no one in Lusaka. I only came to, to the University of Zambia. I knew no one. I learned the things I, in town because I came in to invest, because there was a policy of free education. That's why we restored free education when we came in, to give that investment to that child from Chama, from Kaputa, from Kambombo, from Kashinagash. I know I, know I was going to say Kashinagash. What a great thing. You know, when we employ these young nurses and teachers, they post that this government is different. Before I used to apply, five years I graduated to be a teacher somewhere. I couldn't get a job because they used to ask me for something. That's the first time I heard about the expression of something. So I said, what does it say? Under that PF, we had to pay money in order to be considered for a job. But when this government came in, I'm a child of Kawamba. I graduated five years ago. I applied. I know nobody in Lusaka. I've now been employed. What a joy. What a joy. There you are. It's a different scenario. So we will look into that, Matthews. We need to grow the economy. We need to expand the economy. We need to create more revenues to support. I don't want to waste your time. We inherited a lot of debt, not just these we have been negotiating, just a fuel bill, Minister. How much did we? PF were buying fuel and not paying. 
They left us a bill of how much? 800 million. 800 million dollars. Which they were drawing fuel and didn't pay for it. We are now dismantling that. They left a lot of suppliers, including those who supplied air. They never paid them. We are now dismantling that debt. Colleagues, running a country is not a joke. And if you continue playing easy in electing leaders and put them in office, you regret worse than the mess we have now. We must work as one people, common interests, interests of the country, irrespective of where you were born, your mother, your father, the language you speak. I mentioned it already earlier. We must have a common ground, intersection. That is the interest of the people of Zambia. When we do that, our own interests will be taken care of. That's how it works, because our interests are a subset of the national interest. I say that because we inherited a lot of debt beyond what we've negotiated, and we're dismantling it. These are the pressures. And people say, oh, that money was borrowed, which led us to a debt crisis. You want to continue doing that? No. Then you are making children who are not yet born to suffer for crimes they did not commit. Once we are through with the cleaning up, for me, I see where we are going. I picture this country seven years from now, ten years from now, totally different country. Totally different country. You want an example? When we came in, the mining sector had collapsed, completely collapsed. Mopani, down. There is an MP for Kankoye, Nimufrila. Avena Kango. Avena Kopala. Munishan. Hey, yeah. I said, I'll be a case in. Kare Wangu. Wangu Tashe. So, Mopan was down. KCM was messed up. Just to give you an example, Mopani, our previous colleagues, worked up a debt of $1.7 billion. Just like that. Like a game. We come in, we struggle, we reduce that debt to $500 million. We save $1.2 billion on Mopani. Now, already the projected production is up. Mopane had slid down to 70,000 metric tons or less. 60? 67,000 metric tons went down from 220. Now, within a short time, we'll be pushing it to, three, to 230. Huh? Correct me. Huh? 230,000 metric tons. That is work now. That's not hanging around. That's work. KCM? We worked so hard. Another mess. KCM will be back. We've got the key stages now in place. Class one of the creditors approved the scheme of arrangement. Class two approved the scheme of arrangement. Average 97% approval. What we needed was only 75%. That's work now. That's not hanging around. And we're in the last lap. And KCM will be back. A mine that was gone, Rwansha, 20 years plus, was in the graveyard. That's what Abena Kopala now says. They say, oh, we Because That was the message they were giving last week, only last week. I was in Rwansha. 28 shaft, dewatering we have started. We've already started employing people. When we're through with that, 3,000 new jobs in Rwanda. Rwanda was dead. Is that work? All is hanging around. That's work. So the Copper Belt will be back, Mingomba project, largest deposit. That's in a project we initiated since we came into office. And now it's on the ground. They're employing people already. Even suppliers were being employed at a, what's that show? Come, 
come next. I was at a show last week. Can you believe? Now the mines, Mopani is seated there. Mingomba is seated there. They have their IT gadgets. They are registering suppliers, Zambian suppliers. You've never seen it like that. Openly, transparently. So you ask me, will Cobra Bell be different? Yes. How far from now? We've already started seeing the benefits. Jobs, quality, all of that stuff. So Cobra Bell is moving. We move other areas. So I see where we will be. I can see it with my eyes. I invite you to see it as well. But your patience is important. Your support is important. Ooh, what's the time now? Huh? 17. 17. Colleagues, I have a call with President Ramaphosa. Exactly 17 hours. I seek your indulgence to allow me to take the call. The ministers can finish off. I think if there are questions, other questions, there are other ministers who may want to say one or two things. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.